Let's talk about Shadow Pact, Fire and Blood in my DC Cinematic Universe. We start off in the fortune-telling shop of Madame Xanadu as she is attacked by her sister, Morgan Le Fay. She has been returned to life from the white light at the end of Crisis, and she is now set out trying to find Merlin's Book of Eternity. In my universe, the Book of Eternity is Merlin's personal spell book, which includes the instructions that Merlin used to banish his father, Belial, the son of Trigon, to hell. And Morgan is trying to free him. This banishment is seen as most impressive by magic users because this was something that only the Endless had managed to do when they banished Trigon, Belial's father, to hell all of those centuries ago. During this movie, we would find out the backstory of Xanadu and her other two sisters, one of them being Morgan Le Fay, the third being Vivian, the Lady of the Lake. They were three daughters of a woman named Igraine, who later became the wife to Uther Pendragon and bore him his son, Arthur. So she is the older sister of King Arthur. Eventually, Morgan and the other sisters were taken in as Merlin's apprentices as they were all highly gifted with magic. But Morgan was tempted by dark magics and she began to commune with Belial and they fell in love. And she began opening portals to hell to summon demons to attack Avalon. And this essentially started like decades of demonic wars against the kingdom of Avalon. Eventually, Vivian and Merlin had to forge a magical sword capable of slaying demons. Because you see, you can't kill a de if you kill a demon, they just pop back up in hell. But this sword could actually kill a demon and end its existence a mystical blade they called Excalibur. Now, because this sword was so powerful, they didn't want anyone unworthy to wield it. So they put the sword in a stone and enchanted it so that only someone pure of heart who would use the sword for good would be able to draw it. For years, people tried to pull it, but no one was able until the eight-year-old Arthur pulled the sword from the stone. He then trained for over a decade on how to use it, and he became the primary force against the demons during these demonic wars. In this universe, Arthur himself was also a metahuman, essentially with like Captain America levels of like strength and stamina and all that stuff. Like super soldier King Arthur, that's cool. And eventually he would go on to found the Knights of the Round Table, and one of those knights was Sir Jason Blood, a very honorable man. Now, during this war, one of the biggest threats against the forces of Avalon was the demonic general Etrigan. Etrigan was actually Merlin's brother, Merlin himself being half demon and his father was Belial. And so they had to figure out how to get rid of Etrigan. But Merlin didn't want his brother killed. Instead, Merlin wanted his brother reformed. And so he figured out a spell to bind Etrigan to a soul equally as good as Etrigan was evil. And so they bound Etrigan eternally to Jason Blood's soul fusing the two so that they could swap places with the enchantment that we all know. And with Etrigan dealt with, this is when Merlin turned his attentions to their father Belial and figured out how to banish him to hell. Now completely powerless, Morgan and the rest of her forces were easily dealt with. Unfortunately, Arthur and many of the other knights died during this tragedy and they took Excalibur and placed it back in the stone waiting the next hero who would be worthy to pull it. Back in the modern day, the Shadow Pact is assembled to deal with Morrigan. Madame Xanadu reaches out to Jason Blood, who she knows is still alive because he's bound to Etrigan. Etrigan reaches out to his buddies, and then we get a national treasure-ass journey of globe-hopping shit as they try to hunt down Morrigan as she is gathering the stuff she needs to perform the spell to unleash Belial, Etrigan's father. Eventually, they manage to track down Morrigan, who has gone back to the ruins of King Arthur's castle 
where she needs to perform the ritual. The, you, you gotta undo it where it got done. Now, back at the ruins, Morrigan uses the spell book of Merlin to undo the binding enchantment of Etrigan, and she rips Jason Blood and Etrigan apart, freeing Etrigan from Jason's influence. And then she makes a pitch to him to become the demonic general once again, to side with her and free his father and attack the world, unleash the forces of hell. But Etrigan refuses. His time spent bonded to Jason Blood has reformed Etrigan. He is now a good person and he will not free his father. This infuriates her and she reveals that she needs his blood to free his father, but she doesn't need it to be willing. And she slashes Etrigan across the chest, making him bleed over the altar. And she performs the spell, opening a portal to hell and demons begin rushing out, including, yes, Belial. The Shadow Pact begin fighting against the forces of hell and Raven, who is there with her uncle, is proving way too much of a threat. And so, once again, utilizing Merlin's tricks, Morgan casts the banishing spell and banishes Raven into hell. And now we watch as the forces of hell descend upon the soul Raven. As the fight continues, Jason Blood is thrown to the side where he lands on something hard underneath a thicket of thorns. He rips it apart and we see Excalibur waiting to be drawn by a man with a good heart. He reaches for it, his hand touching the blade, and he begins to draw it and then blood splatters over the sword and we see Morrigan kill Jason blood. He collapses dead, unable to draw the sword. But this enrages Etrigan. This is the all hope seems lost moment, and Etrigan, who this whole time had been holding back his father Belial, is enraged witnessing the death of his soul brother. He is fighting back his father, but Belial is bragging about Etrigan will never be able to defeat him. Even if he manages to kill him, he will just respawn back in hell. And now that the portal is permanently open, he will climb right back out. No matter what Etrigan does, the fight's over now. And so Etrigan tries something crazy. He goes over to the lifeless body of Jason Blood and Etrigan pulls Excalibur from the stone. Etrigan's entire body is wreathed in fire, as touching it should destroy him, but it doesn't. His heart is now pure, and now Etrigan, wielding Excalibur, leaps at his father and destroys Belial. This terrifies Morgan, who tries to summon more demon reinforcements, but finds none are coming through the portal anymore. And we cut back to Hell, revealing that Raven was not overrun by the forces of Hell. She has completely decimated them. And now all of the forces of Hell are bowing to her, Trigon's daughter, their rightful queen. Morgan is now completely out of reinforcements and powerless. And she's then surprised by her sister, Madame Xanadu. Madame Xanadu, using her own blood, seals Morgan away in hell. And then Constantine, using his blood, manages to unbanish his niece, Raven. Xanadu then entrusts Merlin's tome to Zatanna and John. John begins flipping through it, noting how dangerous this book is. If the cult of Trigon had managed to find this in his first movie, they wouldn't have needed him to do a reverse soul siphon to get Trigon into this world. They could have just freed the guy. He then also flips through it to see if there's anything about dragons. There wasn't, and he, he's like, whew, that would have been bad. Cassie would have been pissed. And then the Shadow Pact bury Jason Blood and hold a funeral for the final remaining night of the round table. Etrigan, now wielding Excalibur, goes back out into the world to fight other forces of evil now that he is free to make his own decisions. And that is Shadow Pact, Fire and Blood, in my DC Cinematic Universe.